Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to talk about the basics of character movement or locomotion, more specifically walking and changing direction when you're walking. Now to do this we're going to, I'm going to demonstrate a couple of different motion tools and show the various ways that you can change walking direction because it's kind of an important concept to, uh, to learn when you're animating your character. Now first what we're going to do is we're going to go into our motion tab up here and go into mix moves because I'm going to save part of a mix moves motion clip. We're not going to save the entire thing, I'm going to dissect it and save a little bit of it. So uh, to find this motion I'm going to use, just go up to your character creator mail profile up here, go to stand and just double double click this uh, walk turn motion right here. Now we don't want the entire motion uh, where he's actually you know, changing position. The only part we want to take out is like this little area here where he's turning because that's kind of like you know kind of monotonous to animate if you want to do that so it's kind of just easier just take this clip and you know apply it to combine it with other clips which we're going to do later. So let's press F3 and go into our timeline here. Let's take a little bit of a look at the side view of our character. So this frame right here is basically where he begins to turn. So if we play back, scroll through our timeline right here, you can see he takes a left step and then a right step is right here where he kind of just starts to turn. So let's let's press, uh, go to about here where he plants his right foot. I'm going to right click on the timeline or in the motion clip and break that motion clip and I'm going to delete the first part because we don't need that, ent that entire approach uh, section right there. And then he does his little turn, little dipsy do here. And uh, if we just go through our timeline a little bit further, you can see that he will begin his turn. And I'm going to stop it here as he plants his left foot because we don't need the, uh, the rest of it there. So as soon as he plants his left foot, which is right there, then we're going to right click on this, break the clip and delete the second section. Now the next part is really important because if you want to apply this to other, uh, combine it with other animations, what you want to do is you want to make it, uh, first I'm going to take this motion clip and click and drag it to the very beginning of my uh, timeline. And you can see he does the same thing, but what we also want to do is make sure our character is selected and go over here to our modify tab and also use reset zero out. Now that's going to change my character's position back to the root. If I press the F key, it'll focus on him, and you can see there he is at the scene root. Now this is important because if you don't do this, your character, especially if you export it to FBX and use it in like Unreal or something, your character might fly off into an unknown location, and uh, it'll be a little bit confusing for you to figure out. So always make sure you reset the root, especially when you're using these uh, root motions here. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is save this clip. So I'm going to just zoom in on my timeline here, and I'm going to click and drag in the Collect Clip track for the duration of my motion clip, and then just simply right click and add motion to library. And I'll add this to my desktop, we'll just call it turn. Okay, so we have that motion saved. Now what we can do is just delete it because we don't need it anymore. We have it saved already. Okay, so let's delete this. And you can see our character is off somewhere in the distance. So we just need to reset him back to the scene root again just by pressing reset zero out there. All right, so now what we're gonna talk about is the basic uh, path follow, uh, making our character follow a basic path. This is an essential part of uh, learning how to uh, you know, make your character move. Now before I do this, I like to press the G hotkey because that gives us a direct overhead view of our character, an orthographic view. And um, I'm going to create a path. So to create a path, all I need to do is just go to create and create path. And now you just need to select the points where you want your path to be. So I'm going to just go to click on this little, uh, corner of the grid there, cross section of the grid, and then go up to here and then a couple grids down. We'll go to this cross section here and then probably to here and back down to here. All right, that looks like a nice um, half circle there. Okay, and we can press escape to complete our, uh, our walking there. If you want to uh, move any of these grid uh, uh, points, path points, uh, by the way, you can just go ahead to edit path and select any points like this one and press the W hotkey to move it um, wherever you want. We'll just move a little bit more rounded position there. Okay, let's go ahead and press escape then. And let's go ahead and make our character walk along the path now. So he has this path to walk along in a semicircle. Who knows, he's just kind of wandering for no reason. So the first thing we want to do is apply a motion to our character. This is kind of my method of, of, kind of uh, just creating this path walk. Maybe other people have different uh, order, but I like to just go to motion right here and motion puppet. So we're going to have our character walk for a few steps. So I'm just going to choose a basic walk. And if I press space, you can preview it. You can see it right there. Okay, there's our walk. So I'm just going to press record and press enter. Have him six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Take ten steps, and then we're just going to stop it right there. Okay, so he's now at about frame 405. 
So at frame 405, what you can do now is just go to the modify tab right here, or the edit tab right on the top, and go a little bit further down. And what you want to do is pick path, but you want to make sure you pick path at the very beginning. Okay, so I'm going to go back to frame one, and I'm going to select pick path, and I'm going to pick the very first point on my path. Okay, so pick path, and I'm just going to choose that point right there. Okay, and our character will align to that point, and it says position 0, 0. Now let's go to the very end of that clip there, and you can see it's still in position, but at the very end, like the very last uh, frame of this animation, I'm just going to enter in 100 in position, and that's going to take him to the very end of the uh, path right there. So let's go, and we can see he's kind of walking in a strange fashion, uh, maybe like a sideways moonwalk or something, and a lot of sliding is happening there. So the first thing we want to do is have him obviously follow along the path, and that's quite easy to do. Just select follow path, and generally you're going to use the negative Y or the positive Y axis for biped characters walking along a path on the ground there. So I'm just going to select negative Y axis in this case, and our character will be along the path. And if we press play now, you can see he'll walk quite nicely along the path. Um, if you notice there's foot sliding, what you can do, there's a couple of things you can do if there's foot sliding occurring. Um, make sure that you have your speed uh, option toggled in the timeline, and you can increase, if I take this clip and I increase the speed, like that, take a look at what happens when my character moves. He's kind of just like sliding along right there, and he's walking a lot faster too, and then he'll slide for the uh, rest of the clip. Um, if your character is uh, the opposite uh, opposite problem, where he's uh, you know walking too fast, then you can speed it out, or you can uh, extend it out like this. But now you can see as he takes one step, he's kind of sliding with one step, and maybe not ideal. So you can combine that. If I also go into my uh, uh, motion tracks right here, and I go to the uh, where you have constraint right here, constraint is where you'll find the uh, path constraint on your uh, character. So if we uh, twirl down the constraint right here, you can see there's our path constraint, which ends right here. At, he's at position 100 right there. So, I mean, you can change the position of this uh, when he gets to 100 to wherever you want along the path. Um, I'm just going to kind of keep this, you know, where I had it before. I think that's fairly decent. And uh, we'll just kind of leave it right about there. And again, you can take this clip, or this uh, keyframe rather, and you can move it and uh, so on and so forth. We're going to kind of keep this uh, right here. Um, I think it looks good enough for my purposes. He's not sliding too much. And you can always uh, tweak that a little bit later on as well. Okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to uh, apply an animation at the end of this. I'm going to apply that turn animation that I saved earlier. So let's go to the very last frame here. And at the second last frame here, or right after the last frame of our clip, what I'm going to do is apply the second clip, that uh, turn motion that I had saved earlier. So I'm going to go to my desktop here, and you can see we have our turn motion. There it is. I'm just going to click and drag that and apply it to my character. So there we go. And we'll just apply it to him. And you can see he'll turn around nicely and head the other direction. Now, if we scrub through our timeline and play this back, notice that there's a little section here. If we play back, um, he'll uh, you know, have a little bit of a turn there and start sliding as well. Now, one thing you want to make sure you do is um, at this point here, because our character is still constrained to the path, at the very first frame of the second clip, we want to release him from the path. So let's go ahead and press release. And you can see that adds a keyframe right there, and there's no longer a constraint on our path. Now this creates a problem because he'll slide over here, and there'll be some weird, some kind of weird jerking um, transition area. So if you're wondering where that transition comes from, just click your last keyframe, and you can see there's a kind of a release uh, transition area on the constraint. I'm going to take that all the way down. We don't want that uh, release transition, and that will fix the problem right there. Okay, so really important little detail there. Now, another important little detail is which feet he's placing down. Um, so let's go ahead and play back. So if you recall, the very first frame of our turn has our character with his right foot planted. So what we want to do is, in the section before, uh, the uh, clip before rather, we want to uh, cut at a place where he's almost about to plant his right foot. And then we want to create a transition between those two. So at about right here, where he's almost planting his right foot, if we zoom in a little bit, let's take a better look at it. As he's about to plant his right foot, this is where we want it to end the previous clip. So let's right click that and break it. And we'll just select this section and delete it. Now what we need to do is obviously, uh, we need to move our uh, turn. 
over to this section right here. And you can see now he will continue sliding because our position uh, 100 keyframe is way over here. So we need to break that and turn it down, uh, bring it down over this direction and the other keyframe as well. We can hold Alt and scroll in to zoom in to make sure that we uh, have it all taken care of. Okay, so now we have him walking like this and turning flawlessly. And now the cool thing is here, he's no longer constrained to the path. So we can make him walk whatever direction we want. So now this section I'm going to be talking about uh, using a stationary motion. So this is basically just, you know, applying a transform, or rather applying a motion puppet tool and using transform keyframes to change the position of your character. Very basic, but we're also going to change direction in the middle of it. And I'll show you uh, how to do that. Okay, so let's go ahead and use our motion puppet tool again. And we're going to use the same basic walk, press record. And the silly goof will turn around the wrong direction. And it's just normal because uh, of the way that the motion puppet works. We'll do a few steps. It doesn't really matter how many steps. I think that's fine. And we'll close down the motion puppet. Now there's a couple things we need to do here. Um, whoops, we went a little bit too far there. Let's uh, go to, here we go. Okay. So now as our character is turning, he's planting his left foot and that's where we cut off the clip. So let's find a section of the puppet clip where he's about to plant his left foot. So about right there. Okay. Or rather after he's planted his left foot because he's planted his left foot here. And this one is where we, he's kind of um, coming bringing his right foot forward. Okay, so about right here is where we want to right click, break this uh, puppet clip and delete the section that we don't want and bring this bad boy over. All right, and we will zoom in just to make sure we get a good uh, transition going on. All right, so oops, there we go. Okay, now from here, you can see he's kind of turning around and uh, doing his silly turnaround for some reason. So what I want to do here is at the very beginning of the transition area, just double click on the transform uh, track and create a keyframe. And then at the very first frame of the actual puppet clip, I'm going to turn him around and we're going to face him in the correct direction. Okay. So I think he was facing about that direction. So now if we play back, you can see, whoop, there we go. Okay. So nice clean transition, turning left foot, right foot. Okay. Good to go. Now the uh, next part is basically just, um, you know, going forward a few frames. Um, so, one, two, three, four, five steps maybe, okay, as he plants his uh, right foot. And then we can just uh, press the G hotkey and then the W hotkey. We'll press the W hotkey twice because that gives us a local axis on the character. And we can use that as a reference for, you know, which direction we want our character to be going in, okay? So he's going five steps. Um, shouldn't take too much distance, so maybe about to right there. Okay, and that'll create another transform keyframe right there. So let's take a look at, uh, you know, if that worked out okay. Okay, so let's just uh, take a look from the side here. Um, as our character, after he turns, a little turn, turny turn there, and uh, walking this direction. And uh, I think that's okay. You know, very uh, minimal sliding. Again, if you want to fix that sliding, there's various ways you can do it. Now, what I want to do here is, at this point, as he's planting his right foot, change direction. So I want our character to change direction mid-walk. So what you need to do here is, I'm going to zoom in on the character here. And uh, I'm going to use a little basic prop, primitive prop, under props in 3D blocks as a reference point. So I'm going to import in this ball here. And I'm just going to reduce the size so we can see our foot a little bit better. And just move it to where our character's heel is, so about right there. And then I'm going to right-click that ball and remove the object animation so it's not animated. Because we want to stay stationary on his right foot. Now, the problem here is, if we want him to turn, notice that you know, his right foot is sliding back right here. So what you want to do is at this point where his foot is like, um, his left foot is on, midway forward right here. What you want to do is bring your character forward to where his heel is, you know, uh, parallel with the, with the sphere there or the same position as the sphere. And then you want to use the e-hockey to rotate your character to whatever direction you want him to go in. Just make sure that uh, heel is kind of, um, parallel or, in the same position as the, as the sphere there. So then he'll walk like this and kind of rotate his heel and then begin walking the other direction. So the key is to make sure that your, your character's foot isn't sliding too much, okay? And then from here, it'll slide back, but you can always, you know, right here, um, move him a little bit forward, and then you begin your uh, other walk. So position right here, and then he begins to walk forward. 
And so then obviously at the end of this uh, clip, uh, we'll go a few more steps, maybe one, two, three, four, five. And then we'll, uh, what we're gonna do is move them a little bit forward. So somewhere like about there, I don't know. So hopefully that works. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, good enough for me. And then what I wanna do is we're going to apply now a root motion. So root motions are fairly simple as well. But this is a stationary motion. So a stationary motion is one where he moves, but he stays, uh, it's a locomotive uh, move, a locomotive animation, but he stays in the same position. A root motion is where your character will actually change position. And you'll see what I mean in just a sec as we apply it. So I'm gonna just right click and remove this uh, second uh, section here, this extraneous section that we don't need. And let's go to this frame right here, and I'm going to apply our motion. So I'm gonna go to the motion library under adventure movies, there is this escape. Um, uh, this is a, co a content pack you can purchase in the content store. There's an escape motion. All right, so let's go ahead and just apply this to our character. And you can see he'll run off uh, somewhere in the distance, okay? So that's cool. Um, that's a root motion. So you can see he's actually changing his transform position as the clip progresses without using a transform keyframe. Okay, so the problem here is we have our character taking a, a right uh, left foot step, but he begins to launch on his right foot. So let's go to somewhere where he's about to step with the right foot. So about right here. And I'm going to break that clip. And we always want to match up the beginning of the second clip with the first clip, okay, with the previous clip. So right foot and planted and begins to take off. Okay, so uh, we don't need this uh, transform keyframe right here. We'll just delete that. And uh, we want to make sure at the beginning Oh, we actually, we actually did not need that keyframe there. So <laughs> this is where our character is going to be uh, moving forward right here. I think that should be okay. Let's make sure that uh, it's not too far away. So obviously you don't want him to be that far. So let's move him back a few frames or a few grid lengths there. There you go. Okay. And then he begins to take off. So this is the, the reason I have a transform keyframe here is because it's the beginning uh, frame of our transition. And the second frame of our transition, we're going to use this sphere again um, to move it over to where we have the beginning of our transition. So we need to go to this frame right here, take our sphere, put it where our character's right foot is, right there, because we don't want that sliding. And again, right click, remove object animation. And then here, you can see his right foot will kind of slide back. We don't want that to slide back. We want that to be in the same position. So again, we will just Moving forward, right about there, and let's take a look at this transition right here from run to walk. Boom, and he just takes off like that. Okay, so walking, walking, and then boom, takes off on his right foot. Okay, so then you can go ahead and, um, you know, at the end of this frame, or into this clip rather, uh, zoom in and uh, reapply that one more time. You just apply it being chased right there again, and he'll, uh, you know, continue running. Now, if you want to do the same thing with, uh, you know, changing position, you can do that as well. Make sure right here, you got a transform keyframe right there. And then here, you got another transform keyframe. And generally, um, what you can actually do is delete this second clip. And if you want at this frame right here, just add a transform keyframe and change the position to whatever direction you want. So maybe this direction right here. Let's need to, again, make sure that we have the right foot placed where we need it. So bring that reference dummy over, remove object animation, and have our dude moving like that. So you can see obviously the heel is in the wrong position, so place it right there, and have him maybe run this direction, okay? And then when you apply the root motion, it'll always go directly forward from the character's local axis. So again, we'll start running this way. Okay, so then we have a running this way like this, and then pivoting and running that way. So let's take a quick look at the entire animation. Again, we use various methods to have our character, you know, move around, walking along this path right here towards the end, doing a quick little turn and walking this direction and then changing direction slightly. And then he begins to run and run that way. Okay, so just a couple of quick little tips for you guys to, uh, you know, create um, some nice locomotion, changing directions using transform keyframes, paths, and combining clips together. Uh, so thanks so much for watching again. Uh, hopefully you learned a lot. Uh, and also check out our forums at forum.reillusion.com. And I'll see you in the next video.